Good morning, coffee gang. Soul Kanamas is taking over this week's brew view. We want to give Adam a little bit of a break. So Shelton and I are hopping on this week to do the episode 23 of season two of the brew view. Thank you guys for joining today. I've got my coffee ready. I know all of you are getting your coffee ready as well. Also, who's ready for this surprise? Hello. I got a haircut. <laughs> I'm gonna get Shelton in here. So we're, we're gonna do a collaborative live stream and uh, Shelton's gonna hop in shortly. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and get some people in the chat. What are you guys drinking? If you could drink in the chat. <laughs> I know, big surprise with the haircut today. I had I had to do the grand reveal on the review. Shelton, how's it going? What's up? Okay, this is a new kind of miracle world for me. I don't know how Adam does it, man. This is interesting. It's it's very impressive. You know, Shelton and I, for those of you who don't know, have ran uh, the podcast, the Soul Copy House on YouTube. We only did one season, uh, ten episodes. It was a really great run, and we want to continue it. But uh, luckily. Adam has given us that opportunity here. So uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, collaboration, specifically uh, the Soul Blend, what, what all collaborations we've had a part in and things that uh, we have done. <laughs> Everyone in the chat right now is talking about my haircut. I, so <laughs> Shelton, Shelton and I both grew our hair for close to two years. And recently Shelton got a haircut. Um, you know, it's been getting hot out recently. And so... Uh, it's about time. What do you guys think? Shelton, what do you think? I think you look good. It was about time. <laughs> yeah, I, I so I put it in ponytails to donate, and uh, I got 16 inches of hair to donate. So isn't that incredible? <laughs> yeah. That's like so much. <laughs> Honestly, I'm kind of surprised it was only 16, because for the longest time, I felt like you're, you were rocking like <laughs> three feet 36 inches 70s vibes for sure so uh shelton do you want to talk about what coffee we're drinking today do you uh so uh as per usual chad has been the absolute brew man this morning uh he has prepared something uh for us and i have not yet sampled it as per coffee house <laughs> tradition yeah so this is this is a tradition of ours so the first thing shelton you can't get the sniff check because i've got the bag here I, I will tell you, smell, it, my house still smells like coffee, so we're good there. <laughs> you get the smells, the, the aromatics in the air. That's so right. we're drinking the Costa Rica. It's a light roast. Shelton, can you give me some some guesses? What Wait, kind of gonna, tasting let me notes? A, can we can we dink it still? Oh yeah, let's do a little dink. So this is a classic. Dink, dink it, and then you know, a little sip. I I love this coffee so much. <laughs> this is my favorite coffee. <laughs> Okay, first of all, I love that uh, when you get like a whole bean coffee or like, you, you know, you go and get coffee that's not ground, you get it nice and fresh. Um, but when you get a high quality coffee, you don't need to add anything to it. You know, you get the water, you get some nice clean filtered water, you make it with the beans freshly ground, and then you don't need to add any creamer, you don't need to add any sweet anything. And you get a nice flavor. So I love the taste of it. I love that I don't have any, any weird milkiness or syrup or like whatever. I just get a natural like it tastes like Costa Rica, you know what I mean? Exactly. And that's that's the thing with, you know, I would say novelty coffee or high-end coffee. You don't need to add the sugar, the cream. Uh, enjoy it for, for what it is, the pure uh, pure black taste of, of raw coffee. So for tasting notes. Yeah, I let's see you, let's see what you hear. What what I are you what are you I tasting? Hate to be wrong. You know I hate to be wrong, but Yeah. It's almost like I don't know. I always want to say like something like this is like if I got like a um, oaky raisin. It's something that's kind of like it feels like a dried kind of thing, but also a little woody. So I don't know how to describe that. Um, I will say you've already hit the nail on the head with one of our tasting notes. And I'm blown away because it's not a common one that we see. Raisin. You said what? raisin. Oh, raisin. Gotcha. It tastes like raisins. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> and then all of the other tasting notes are actually descriptions uh, not of the taste, but more so of the the consistency, I would say, maybe. Yeah. Um, these are going to be a little bit more hard or a little bit more difficult to to guess off so, the taste. So we're talking about like uh, like texture? 
These are more like adjectives, I would say. Yeah, yeah, more like the, texture. I, the adjectives to me come out and it's like, and eh, we couldn't think of anything else to name the tasting notes. So we're just gonna throw like chunky <laughs> at you or something like that. It's like, okay. So my, my for me is like- What's the opposite? What's the polar silky, opposite baby, of chunky? It's silky. <laughs> Let's go smooth, silky smooth. So silky you got smooth, smooth and raisin. I'll go yeah. ahead and give you the other ones uh, and see if you agree. Balanced and sweet. I get a, so I get a hair of the sweet, and it's it, I like. Isn't it interesting? Thing. Without the without the the cream and the sugar, you know, it, it still has that sweet to it, which is interesting for a black coffee. So that's actually what kind of pushed me closer to the raisin thing. Is like you know when you eat a raisin, well, a lot of the oh. raisins you eat have like a little grain of like salt on it for the flavor, but like. With a raisin, even though it's dried, it still has a little bit of like sweetness, despite the fact that it's a dried grape. So it's like a hint of sweetness. It's not overwhelming like a strawberry or like a mango. So like, even though you get like that kind of like raisins, because it's dried, I guess similar to like how wood is, that, that makes me think like the oaky thing. But like the raisin is like the, the blend between a subtle sweetness and the oakiness. I, I, I don't want to sound too pretentious, but like that's no, why. I, I think you've got this coffee down uh, and you can see why it's my favorite. It's Easy going, you know, um, it's welcoming. What's everybody else drinking? <laughs> yeah, so in the chat, if you guys could please just let us know what you're drinking. I know, I know there's a lot of different drinks. We're hoping it's coffee, but um, this is you a judgment free zone, bourbon. so. <laughs> any orange juice? <laughs> Would love to hear what everybody's, what everybody else. Shelton, you, you had a drink this morning. What, uh, what, what other drink did you have a uh, beverage this morning before oh, our coffee? Dude. Uh, it had tasting notes of cardboard and like cheap Kroger coffee. It was Folgers. <laughs> I'm talking about I'm talking about the sparkling water you had, <laughs> yeah. not not the Folgers coffee. We don't talk about that here. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a I don't know the brand. Uh, I had it in the other room, but it was a plant based soda. I wanted to try. I found it at Kroger, and it was like two dollars thirty fifty cents, something like that. It's super expensive, but it was a strawberry vanilla plant-based <laughs> soda and it was pretty good yeah all right so let's see alex mitchell's drinking bottled water candama water a lot of people getting hydrated this morning let's i gotta see 40 it ounce. massimoto dama water um, onyx coffee nice see, geniver 69 griffin creek roasters tp paints 420 mate mm. uh we got some yerba from cam and more water from liam uh, okay, Kendama, Jean Chirk J34, Instant Latte. <laughs> V8 Energy, nice. A lot of water this morning. People are getting hydrated. It's kind the of funny because it's, it's raining out here today in uh, beautiful, sunny Tennessee. <laughs> A&W. Mm, there's some root there's beer. the whiskey and Coke. That's what we were waiting for. We're just going to assume that they're in Europe and it's later in the <laughs> evening <Yeah>. today. <laughs> it's 5 o'clock somewhere. All right, so let's talk about it. Season two, episode 23 of The Brew View, uh, Soul Blend, The Power of Collaboration. Yeah, collab, collab's such a fun word. Collab's used it a lot. Uh, it's got meanings to it. Uh, we've kind of created our own meaning to it. Uh, our, our kind of like motto, which is like, we don't parade it around, but it's Kendama Community Coffee and Collaboration. And that's kind of for us is like, collaboration is a pillar of, what soul does and it has been built that way because it is a pillar of the kendama community in our opinion so yeah absolutely i think uh you know early on when when shelton and i first started soul it was just shelton and i nobody else was involved and uh you can you can only do so much between two people you know your ideas kind of uh i wouldn't say run dry but um it's good to bring in other people and get other people involved. It helps grow community. It helps to cultivate those relationships and, and help people grow. And it also brings some creativity into Kendama, you know, like uh, adding, adding a team, for example, was Teams something. Are it, it was like, the first collab that we ever did was bringing yeah. other people in on Soul Kendamas and, and letting them influence what Soul Kendamas is. Yeah, a team is like inherently collaborative because when you bring somebody on, you know, it's it's uh, it's more personal than like, oh, um, we're sending this person something, you know, they're infused into the brand, you know, they represent you, you represent them. It's it's like a two way street and like their ideas uh, for the better of the company for the community uh, is infused in as well. Um, and like, you know, as we added team members, like the ideas were a, a component that came with it, which is why 
it inspired like the vibes for example yeah the vibes was, was one of the earlier projects where shelton and i let the, let the design uh out of our hands and let let our players really uh you know draw inspiration and put it out there on mm -hmm. a kendama uh for example one one thing i think that uh we don't think of quite as a collaboration, but is such a big collaborative effort is events. Uh, anytime that you get multiple Kanama brands under the same roof, you have people traveling from all different states, countries, um, provinces, you know, to come together and play Kanama. That's a big collaborative effort. And uh, again, it just, furthers building that community in Kendama that we all love so much. And uh, the thing that really keeps us all playing and interested and in love with this game. Yeah, everybody's chatting about how hot it is. 90 degrees in Chicago all weekend, man. When we went to Chicago, it was like a breezy, like 65. Oh, dude. Mm. It was, it was <laughs> Fahrenheit numbers are sounding really hot to anyone <laughs> in Celsius, like 90 it's degrees. 32 degrees Celsius. It is, it is a it is a hot soul summer this summer for sure. Goodness gracious. I don't understand that desert heat. <laughs> so real quick, um, while everyone is listening, uh, as you know, there's a questions tab at the bottom. If you would like to leave Shelton and I any questions about soul, about personal life, about uh, our favorite non-coffee drinks, colors, Feel free to leave questions and you can leave as many as you like. We'll go through them somewhere along the middle of this episode and then at the end of the episode as well. Um, Come to Africa. I would love to visit Africa sometime. I would like to as well. I bet it's really hot out there. I play a fair amount of GeoGuessr and it's fun to try to, when you land in Africa and you kind of know, uh, I haven't had enough experience to be able to pin it down exactly. So it's fun to kind of explore and I've learned a lot more about Africa in the past month that I've known before, just playing Geo GeoGuessr. <laughs> That's amazing. Where, where is somewhere you'd like to travel that you've seen on GeoGuessr? Like the craziest place you're like, oh, wow, that's beautiful. I want to go there. So, so it's me and a friend have been doing uh, one back and forth. They have the daily challenge and it's, uh, it's, like a uni it's like a worldwide event where everybody comes in, they get the same map and you have to all guess and then there's a leaderboard. And so every day my friend and I have gotten on and we've done the daily challenge. And he did it yesterday before me, and then I came in behind him and did it. And he was watching me do it while I did it. So I landed in one, and I looked around, and I was like, I, I see goats. It's kind of like an arid environment. Uh, it, it was kind of a road that had seen uh, quite a bit of driving on it. And I was like, man, we're in Mongolia, man. And I, <laughs> I didn't say anything or whatever. And I was kind of looking around. I settled in Kazakhstan. But sure enough, it was smack in Mongolia. I think it would be sick to uh, to go visit Mongolia just for the views. It's so cool looking. What I would like, I'd like to, I'd like to travel to all the main coffee growers across the world. Oh, yeah, you know, we always idea. we always talk about like Mexican coffee, Costa Rican coffee, Ethiopia, Sumatra. It's like to go and see where the coffee is grown and to try it there. Like that's probably peak freshness. That's that's the perfect coffee <laughs> with with some dirt still on it. Then you're really good at yeah. taking notes. Imagine grown, roasted, uh, ground, and then brewed all in the same place. That would be amazing. Be like uh, Chilean worm is a tasting note. <laughs> <laughs> you're that close to the ground. Yeah, like an actual worm in the coffee. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit more about collaboration over the years. Uh, what's what's been some of your favorite uh, collaborations or collaborative efforts that that we've done? I don't want to be too cheesy, but it's definitely ones that we haven't released yet that are on the way. <laughs> and you, you know of it. I can't talk about it, but and I'm not promoting anything. But like the collabs that are the future of for us are some of the ones I've been most excited about. I feel like the 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 fun thing is when you get uh, someone new in uh, into the, your circle for collaborating you are challenged in a different way because they don't know your restrictions or what you perceive are restrictions. So like in your head, you know, like when we had the vibes, uh, the team was free to rock and roll, right? But like, we were kind of like, this is generally what we're looking for. Like we want tracking, we want blah, 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 blah. And then like, you know, Solid we, colors. Yeah, but immediately Kevin comes in and he's like slice of paradise. And it's like, does that fit the tracking requirement? <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like, it's a fresh idea, not bound by your restraints. And so like, 
I, I would I would have never come up with that idea. That was just something that you and I couldn't have done on our own. Exactly. <laughs> Whenever, and so, for example, where we had not previously done something like that, that was something that was bound by restraint. And then when we accomplished it, it suddenly was within the world of what's possible. And so next time someone came with an idea, they were wanting to be more creative, which meant outside the bounds of what's possible. So they didn't come at us with like, hey, let's do this Life's in Paradise, but you know, they came at us with like, hey, let's try something like this. And then we're like, okay, how can we make that work? And so like some of the new collabs is kind of like that, where it's like, okay, this is a challenge to solve. And for me, like that's an element of like the collaborative environment where you're, you're progressing. It's through a challenging environment and creativity. Yeah, and I'd say, I mean, if you were to say, you know, the first collab we did was your favorite, obviously you want, to, you want each one to be a little better, you know, you, you want to improve on everything. Man. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a good answer. I'd, I'd say um, everything we do, I love all the collaborations. Of course, we wouldn't follow through with a, pro with a project that we weren't passionate about or, or liked. Um, but one of the coolest ones, I think, just because of all the stories tied to it, and I had to rock it today. Oh, yeah. The Amu Rice. I like uh, it, dude. And so for, for those of you who don't know, um, I went to Japan for two months after I graduated college, and I lived in Sumida, Tokyo for uh, that two-month period, really close to Moomoo Coffee. I'm sure most people are familiar with Moomoo Coffee Collab, and I would go every single morning, get coffee at, at Moomoo, and then on Wednesdays, there was, this, uh, there was this cafe. It was actually called a Share Cafe. And every day of the week, there was a different chef or a different barista. Someone would come in every, every day. It would be a different barista or, or, or shop every single day. And on Wednesdays, there was the omelet rice chef. And I would go on Wednesdays. We would get the omelet rice. It was just, that's kind of like a really traditional, not a traditional, but like a special meal, I guess, in Japan. Um, I kind of compared it to like the chicken and waffles for us. Like you wouldn't have chicken and waffles every morning. You probably wouldn't have it every week. <laughs> But like it's a Better special not. treat. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, if you do eat chicken and waffles on the regular, let us know in the chat because I'd be very impressed. I'll be sure uh, to avoid you. <laughs> <laughs> you better use a lot of syrup if you do. Yeah. Um, so I would go to this, every Wednesday would go to this cafe and just establish a, you know, a relationship with him. He played Kanama. He got his first soul like while we were there or maybe shortly beforehand. Um, and he just fell in love with soul and, and we became really good friends and he approached me and said, I want to make an omelet rice kendama. And I was like, what is that going to look like? I, you know, like, how do you, and, and he, he came up with this design and he literally wrote omelet rice <laughs> around the ball. And I'm like, I'm thinking like, I would never do that. And then I showed Shelton and Shelton's like, I love it. Oh, Let's dude, do it. Obsessed. Like the first Get the day, little like... ketchup on the top. And then the, the green soul is supposed to resemble like, uh, Green garnish, garnish the green yeah. garnish and then the white's like a plate <laughs> it, it was really well thought out but oh, I love that it. collaboration is just so unique in, in the way that it kind of came together and well, for him you yeah. know it was, it was kind of interesting because like for him in the space in which he's working it's a collaborative environment because you know the success so you know you can go on wednesdays to get an omelet rice but yes. you know it's like on tuesdays there's something on but the, the building itself is built by the group of chefs. You know, <laughs> it's, it's literally people. a collaboration cafe. Yeah. And so for him, it was just so natural to just extend that into like, hey, what else is kind of a world in which Omurais can exist? And, you know, yeah. it's like, okay, maybe a Kanama. And I saw that and I was like, <laughs> it, it, to me, just seeing it, it I, I, I heard like, explosions in the sky i saw fireworks and light bulbs go off you know i just got like him his shop what it meant everything just looking at the design and so it was just like i don't know it felt so natural to see that as a collab with yeah us, you know? yeah that's really exciting outside of kendama can you think of any collaborative efforts i have one um i'll, I'll start uh it's kind of ironic because it's also the title of this episode soul blend uh, that's a collaboration. And uh, I worked at a coffee shop for two years before I went, the two years like leading up to that Japan trip. Um, I worked at a coffee shop and I was barista, learned, you know, everything about good quality coffee, making coffee. And the coffee shop owned a roaster. And when we left, 
or, or when I left and pursued Solkanama's full time after college, I, I was like, man, I love this coffee shop so much. I love all the employees. I love every customer that comes in every single day, gets the same order. The 86 year old man who has his own mug underneath the shelf. And I know to put two ice cubes in this coffee when he <laughs> orders. Uh, and I was like, well, what can we do to continue this relationship? Even though I'm leaving, it was like, oh, let me ask if they would allow us to make our own blend through their roaster. And when I asked, they was like, yes, how soon can we do it? I'm like, mm. let's create a label and then make it next week. And sure enough, that's how the soul blend came along. And now we stock all their coffees on our website. And that's, again, it's one of those pillars of soul, you know, coffee, Kendama, community collaboration. And I, I just, that, that one is really cool. Just ties, ties it all together. <laughs> I don't know how I, I don't have necessarily a favorite collaboration, but I could go on a rant like how... I guess you could say memorable or, or something so, you, know, so, so, you so, admire I'll just, I'll just go on a lot. tangent here like I do. Okay, so like a lot of companies now are realizing just how good collaborating is. And, uh, you know, it's... Is that Kendama companies or just no. in general? Yes. Gotcha. So, so in general, many, many companies, Disney, which they've... Okay, so like, yeah, let's take a step back. Disney, they've really <laughs> built themselves over the past decade off of merchandising which, uh, you know, is licensing, which is kind of like an arm of collaboration. You know, it's kind of oh, like, yeah. hey, we're pairing up with someone else and like, we're gonna deliver something to people, consumers, customers, whatever, that they'd like in a different medium than they normally would enjoy it in. So like you see a movie and you, you love Star Wars, you think it's sick and you've never, like this is pre-Disney, right? You like, you've never had like an action figure. You haven't had like, you know, collectibles. And then Disney comes out and says, hey, we're pairing up with Mattel or whoever you are low, a Lego, you could build what you saw in the movie. It's like, oh, that's my cool. God, yeah. Dude. Like, you get to experience what you love more physically in the real world. And like, uh, one company uh, I've seen doing more and more collabs <laughs> is build a bear. <laughs> yeah, that one's really cool. Yeah. So so you know, it's funny, because like, when you're a kid or whatever, you might not have uh, been or like, maybe you haven't experienced it. But basically, you go in and you literally build a bear. Uh, so you pick like, great name. Yeah, they literally it fully it encompasses so the whole trend. business model. <laughs> so you pick out what you want, uh, be it a koala, which is what I think we had, or like a bear or like um, whatever, or a baby Yoda, or a Winnie the Baby, baby Yoda, Yoda build a bear would be really cool. <laughs> yeah, and so like this year, one of the things that they released, which was like a prime, like, uh, what's the right word? I, I want to say suspect, a prime, like, um, was just like at the perfect time or yeah it's like a, a the, the a perfect thing through which they could do a collaboration and they did a, a collab build a bear did a collab with animal crossing and i saw that and i was just like it was the same exact feelings i had when i saw the omni rice like, <laughs> it's like it's meant to be bing, bada boom this is it and i don't really play <laughs> animal crossing or anything but just from a distance you see it and you just know it works you just know it makes sense and uh, so it's just fun to see a lot of big brands start to embrace the collaborations. Like another example, for example, uh, like maybe like half a decade or a decade ago was when Kanye West was initially looking for a company to do shoes with. Now yeah. <laughs> it is a no brainer. It's like, it's like you can't imagine a world without Yeezys, right? And, and, yeah, you know, yeah. They look, you know, depending on who you are, or whatever, it, you know, kind of weird, but like, uh, it's kind of iconic. I don't own a pair, but I, I, like, I, I like them. They look nice. Yeah, and so like I think he went to Nike first, and basically they dropped the ball, and so now it's with Adidas, and that was such a fantastic move for them because the collabs grew over time. You know, mm. it's it's kind of a way to connect with somebody and kind of bank on them because, you know, uh, it's only gotten bigger. And like at the time, I think uh, Kanye, uh, he was like. When he went to Nike, he was basically like 50 million in debt trying to build a <laughs> brand or something. And I think the Yeezy brand now, like six, seven, eight years later, is worth a billion. Oh my <laughs> so like if you're talking that's numbers, or whatever, like that's what collabs can do. And like you've seen a lot of more of these uh, young dudes like, um, you know, Nelk or like whoever, like uh, Danny Duncan, you know, these guys are doing these weird little collabs with different little grungy stores or like bigger stuff. And, you know, it's just. I don't know, it's just fun. You get to involve everybody. Um, it's a good time, I don't know. It's always been fun pairing up with people that you didn't know could work together. Yeah, that is really cool. 
Um, I, I was thinking, uh, you know, within Kendama, another idea of this word collaboration, Sweets Kendamas has done a really good job bringing in players like, uh, like Reed Stark is probably one of the earlier ones, but, you know, we know Boogie T and Boo Johnson, all these players, Kendama players that uh, are really outside of Kendama, now inside Kendama, you know, due to the, the mods, but the collaborative effort of like getting Kendama into other spaces and, and them even getting people in Kendama maybe into EDM or BMX or skateboarding. That's a really cool one that, you know, people might not think of as a collaboration. It's more people like a partnership, but anytime you bring two people together on a project, it's, it's a collab, you know? Yeah. You almost increase your chance of success for any one thing by just including other people who have good ideas. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot more that goes to it aside from just ideas. I don't want to make it sound like you could just pop up and say, Hey, make a peppermint Kendama. You know, it's <laughs> like going to crush, you know, it's, it's really thoughtful, but like, yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of our, our collaborations have been pretty organic, you know, they just happen through encounters, people we meet, um, you know, usually going to events, traveling, you meet someone, they have a good idea or, or you just meet someone, you like them and you just become friends. And then months later you talk, uh, and, and something just comes out of it, you know, in that sense. Oh, yeah, I agree with you. Do you, you want to uh, maybe hit a couple of questions that we've had? Yeah. So just a reminder for people new in the chat, uh, if you have any questions for us, please leave them in that questions box at the bottom of the IG live. There's a little chat bubble with a question mark. Looks like we got a couple here and I will go ahead and pin one. Um, let's see. Okay. Here's one. If you're backpacking, how would you coffee? How would you what? Coffee. How would you coffee? How would you coffee? I've seen photos. I've personally never done coffee on the go in this way. Uh, but Sheldon, if you were backpacking, you wanted some good coffee, not some, you know, Insta, Insta coffee. How would you do it? So the way I, I think I'd approach this is I would look at the backpacking thing first. So for me, backpacking would probably entail camping. You know, like a lot of people might think backpacking and then immediately jump to Europe. I'm thinking like, backpacking like hiking through like the pnw so for that's me, what I, that's what i think as well gotcha so for me i think uh, funny enough i think the move for me would be a mocha pot i think that's the move mm. you know a little grinder a little bag and then the mocha pot and then you just no paper around. filter needed exactly so it's yeah. easy to clean up it's easy to work with um you still get really really nice coffee so no carbon nice. footprint there yeah yeah <laughs> that's my move hey actually you know you restore probably some carbon to the ground with the ground so you yeah, know you hey. might be kind of adding something back That'd be good. Uh, I was going to say, you know, I think you win on this one, the mocha pot, because, you know, you get a nice fire going. It's easy to just set, set that, that down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm thinking AeroPress because mm. of how small it is. It's plastic. It can't break in your bag. Uh, it's just a little three piece thing. All you would need is the hot water, which, of course, if you got a fire, you know, maybe there's a way to get hot water. Maybe a creek nearby has some fresh spring water for you. So, there you have it, Mocha Pot or AeroPress. Let's see what other questions. And if you're truly desperate and you have no water, just chew on beans. Right. I just snack. I've done that before. I, I think I've been to Trader Joe's and they had chocolate covered ch uh, coffee beans and they were pretty good. Let's see, I'm trying to get these questions to pin. Let me try this one. It's a little gritty, but I still- From Supernog73, the, the sweets legend. Alex himself. Chad, do you miss your hair? I, I thought about this decision for a long time before I committed to making it because Shelton and I, Shelton, when did you get your hair cut? Uh, probably about two months ago. So two months ago, Shelton and I had started, or probably three months, Shelton and I started the conversation of like, uh, let's get our hair cut. You know, we both have long hair. I was harassing Chad. It's a like discussion. I was more <laughs> Sheldon's like, like I can't wait any longer. I'm just going to go now. And so, <laughs> so Sheldon got his hair cut. I molded over for a little bit longer. And uh, it's, again, it's getting really hot out. So the heat, the link, it was getting caught in the seat belt when I'm trying to get out of my car. I'm like, you know what? I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready for a, a change. So I, I don't miss it. I think it looked really cool. It was a, a cool period, but 
uh, you know, all good things have to come to an end. So I'll be honest, I, I have a lot more empathy uh, for women who have long hair, because it's literally such a pain. I'd be like, if I was a woman, I'd, I'd be buzzed, or like, really <laughs> short, like 24 seven, there'd Keep be no it simple. Chance, dude. Yeah, I, I do love I love the look. It's a lot of work. Um, but I, I don't miss it. I'm happy for the change. So I can run I, I can run a little bit faster now. <laughs> yeah. A little more aerodynamic. A little aerodynamic. Okay, cool. Um, what got you into Kendama? So Shell, would you like for me to go first? Or long story short, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> I got Shelton in the Kanama. <laughs> we live together. We actually we live together. You know, obviously we we're brothers, so we we grew up together. But uh, going to college, you know, we lived together for four years, and so that's kind of when Soul started when we were living together, and uh, just got inspired, you know, to make Kendamas. But I I started playing in 2010. I was on the soccer team. I was a freshman in high school and there was a senior on the team tyler marshall he was like all-star player like the coach if all was going bad was like give the ball to tyler he'll score but he would have a kendama in between games after practice and it was just a cool cool little thing um tyler marshall's cousins jake weens so there, there's kind of like the <laughs> the connection there yeah, i got into kendama 2010 it was fun you know, I think just like anyone else, you play Kanama because it's fun, and then you stick around because of the community. You stick around because, you know, traveling is fun. You love progression. And uh, for us, design and sharing Kendama with more people is is really kind of a, a big driver for soul and why we why we keep doing what we do, host events and sponsor players and come out with new designs just because we want to share that with everyone. And, and that's probably um, kind of where I'm driven by it too. It's like, yeah. you know, I, I find so much joy in just like making a better kendama or like hosting a better event or, you know, making better edits. You know, I find a lot of joy in that. And so whenever I see, I get involved with the community and you, it's like uh, the engagement, you know, back and forth kind of, it's like a little dance, you know, where you make something and the people respond and then you, you know, you fix it and you go back and forth over and over. It's just fun to be engaged on that level. That is another interesting thing. You know, as soul exists longer, the community does have quite a bit of impact on, on what we do. Uh, if everyone tomorrow's decides that the one up shape is no longer a Kanama that they enjoy playing, we're going to hear that, you know, and, and we're going to work to, <laughs> to And the get cups are going to get bigger and bigger. And the, <laughs> the cups bigger, the lunars are just going to be, sitting flatter and flatter until you're doing inward or like not inward <laughs> lunars, but uh, <laughs> in decline, decline, lunars. decline lunars. There you go. A little gym reference right there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah, that's what got me into Kanama. I thought it was cool. Um, made some friends playing Kanama, enjoyed the growth and wanted to share that with more people. So let's pop another question. Whoops, I accidentally hit one. We're just going to, oh, that's the same one. Okay, never mind. Man, Adam, this is quite the intricate process here. I, ooh, okay, Shelton, there's a lot of questions that are like more aimed towards me. So I'm going to do this one and then we're going to answer a Chad one. Not a question. I just love Shelton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha. Kalodama, shout out Kalodama. Okay, this next one, let's see. I'll answer a Chad question. Like Chad, as if I'm Chad. Ready? Okay, Shelton, you're gonna answer this one. Mm -hmm. When did you start going vegan? <laughs> From, oh, Andreas. I joked about it for three years. Every <laughs> single day I was with my family, we'd say, where do you wanna eat? And you go, I don't know, I'm vegan. <laughs> so I think this I is all true. It. I was tired of joking and I committed to it. I said, hey, I'm not going to eat ice cream if I can't eat ice cream. So I'm going to go vegan. And I've been vegan for two years. Spot on. That, <laughs> Shelton was answering it. That was third person Chad right there. <laughs> that was Brad. Spot on. Yeah. I guess, you know, more accurately plant-based, but, uh, you know, vegan it is. I'm not that cool. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, this is a cool answer or a question. Shelton, can you answer this? What's a soul kendama? Like, I never heard of it. I only have sweets and chrome. So what is soul? Break it down for what is uh, Anthony. Soul? 
So a soul kendama, that's such a fun question. It's funny, like the longer you go on, sorry. The long, the Did you spill you, your coffee? No, I, I knocked off a, a, a remote for my thing. <laughs> okay, as long as you didn't spill your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the longer you spend working on something like soul, the more you take, like, not for granted, uh, like, where you, like, the foundation of it, but, like, the further away you get from it. You know, you get so complex in the ideas and, like, you know, you're thinking of packaging and, like, support and, like, events that you get away from, like, what is uh, a soul kendama, but... For us, you know, it's like, it's a shape that the, once again, the team has gotten involved in. Uh, it, it was designed uh, in the old RWB, RWB place where we kind of worked on something. Uh, it's very handcrafted. Um, the designs are uh, supposed to be like maximum playability. It's supposed to be like something that you just really enjoy. It's a total jammer. Uh, we don't really like the idea of like one that just stays up on the shelf, for example. Like even one that is like a collab that's beautiful and like it, but it's still meant to be really enjoyed to be played. And um, also the idea that, you know, when you're a part of like our community, you know, your involvement went towards uh, the design and the creation of it. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, it's just a, a soul kendama is a really playable kendama that infuses you with our community. Um, and hopefully something that you'd enjoy. It's hard to put into words. You'd have to try it, but. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, for me explaining what soul is, it, it is ever changing because, you know, the players you have on the team help form the identity of the brand. The Every collaboration we do, every event we host just, again, continues to change what exactly soul is. Um, but those pillars that we talked about, obviously soul can is, we're a Kanama company. We love the Kanama community. We love to collaborate and we love coffee. Those are those four pillars that we, we've talked about. And so, um, yeah, to Anthony, it's just, we just want to make some cool Kanamas, share Kanama, grow Kanama, and uh, get more people involved. Really, that's kind and of the, the goal the there. Same, to, just to play off that, which is, this is kind of something we want to talk about anyway, but like, a lot of the company, what we want to do is just be collaborative in everything that we do. So, for example, like Adam McNeil, Cafe Kendama, he's the he's the Canada source for Soul. Like he's the only guy right now, um, and it's because he and I and Chad and us all together, the team, we all connect at that level. You know, if it's about coffee, if it's about the bean water, if it's about Kendama community, whatever, he's he's perfectly ingrained with that as well, which is why. Um, you know, we're able to do a takeover or whatever, you know, is, is that we're kind of all on the same side here and working towards a mutual goal. Um, and for another example, like um, we've got all the, all of our design work is, is basically done within the Kanama community. So like the next iteration of packaging is, is done by Graham McDonald, who is bad character on Instagram. And he does a bunch of other stuff um, design wise, like he's in the community ink party. He's from Ohio. He's also, he's done a lot of art for us when we did the old pioneers. He's a part of the community. You know, we're finding people who are in it, who get it and who love it uh, to be a part of it as well. And like home media down in Florida, they do uh, blog articles on our website, you know, so it's everybody's connected here. And what we want to do is like keep stepping up, uh, but in involve everybody to build something together. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what Soul spot on. is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, also, soul kendamas is my, you know, don't forget that S at the end. That one, that's special. That S at the end is special to my heart. It stands for special. <laughs> now, uh, all right, this question. Will the first vibes come back? I wasn't playing when they released, and I need a Kelvin Ray mod. So I, here's the thing. I love the idea of doing a throwback to, like, old designs, but it's too soon right now. It's, you know, we got to let it let it be vintage long enough before we do the, the throwback or the return to the old colorways. But I will say, um, I love a lot of the old designs too, and I would love to try them out on a newer shape. So uh, who knows? Maybe. Bada boom. Bada boom, bada boom. See, I'm gonna answer a couple more questions. If you guys have any questions, remember just to drop them in the, ch in the, uh, the questions tab, not the chat. Right. All right, 
we'll see if this one can apply to Shelton. <laughs> what was the latest Dama you purchased? So not obviously not one from Seoul, but have you ever purchased a Kanama, Shelton? Um, let me think. I think I did. Um, I'm trying to think. I, it, what's funny, it's like, you know, when you go to events and, like, you're surrounded by other people uh, who do Kendama and, like, have companies and stuff like that, they just want to give it to you. They want to share, like, their work with you. That's true. So I've got, like, a, a, a crap ton of Kendamas that were just gifted, you know. Um, yeah, shout out to Okinamas in the chat. That one's – show that one real quick. This one's so beautiful because it was made in Latvia. It's another example of, you know, work or whatever. But, like uh, – I'm gonna have. I, I, I'm trying to think. I'm really itching to, to, to think of it. But I, there was one that I was wanting to actually buy that I was thinking about, but I haven't done yet. And it was uh, Azura's uh, Olympic 2021. Oh, that one's really cool. I thought it's it'd be funny cool to too because we're 2021 now. <laughs> I know. I thought it'd be cool and memorable, so I might actually end up, you know, going for it. But I don't think I've bought one yet. Yeah, I'm trying to think. My last purchase. I think yours was. Um, uh, ZB Mags, maybe? Or like, uh, it was somebody's pro mod, I think. We, we did an exchange, Zach and I, um, for a Bosch <laughs> mod. Most of the time. That's cl yeah, most, mostly it's exchanges. I mean, that, that was an exchange. That was the most recent pickup of mine, the, the, the Mags mod. But my last purchase was a cushion cleared Josh Grove mod. Okay, that's what it was. I love the mountains, the trees. It just like speaks to my soul. And, uh, yeah, I, when you see a Konama like that and you've got a good friend who you want to support, you can't help but buy it. You got well, I will say, so Shelton, you said one that you'd like to buy, that Olympics. One that I would like to buy that I haven't yet is the Ben Harold uh, 2. It's just one of those Konamas, like, in stock, sold out. Very, Perfect. you know. Yeah, so I'm like, the time will happen. I don't know when, but that's, that's on my list. Sure. It'll probably be an exchange thing, for sure. I, I, I hope so. That I need to exchange a couple Konamas for that one. <laughs> I'd put money on that, that it's an exchange. Cool. All right, so I'm going to answer one more question, and then if uh, we move on to more discussion. Chris Frazier, 10 years, slaps. Indeedy, indeedy. I always appreciate uh, Christian Frazier's creativity. He's another guy who – he he's – so my favorite thing about Christian is that he is an architect by trade, which – uh, is an interesting combination of infusing like engineer like um, design with an artist's creativity. So he gets that mashup of like he's highly technical, but also explores, you know, the mystery of the world. And so like he'll come with ideas to us or to other people or we hear different things and we're like, you know, that, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he really kind of pushes it and he's very thoughtful. So I, I like that about Christian. Yeah, and we worked with him as well to like help make Linden's mod and Alex's mod as well. Um, all right, so last question. This one is, I think, a topic a lot of people don't really know the answer to, or maybe there's been like a little bit of confusion. So maybe I figured this is a good time to just kind of cover the basis and, and talk about it a little bit. So uh, it says, I miss getting a thank you from Chad when I buy a soul. Why did you switch to a fulfillment company? Shelton, would you like to talk a little bit about like like the early yeah, process yeah. of that? Yeah. What made us even yeah, consider? Long. Well, it's like yeah. right, it's just me and Chad, you know. And you look at other brands and stuff, and they're cemented in a place. You know, you look at Sweets, and, and they're in Minneapolis, and and Sweets has built a life there, and Gabe's built a life there, and all the guys there have built a life there, and and they're pretty comfortable with where they're at, and they've got you know a, a, a means oh. of putting their roots in the ground, and then bringing in people to to work there. And and Chad and I are both kind of still in like this weird like floating in space kind of thing where it's like yeah i don't know where we're landing yet you know chad's in the talks right now of, of moving and uh he's kind of exploring the ideas and alex mitchell is around here somewhere uh <laughs> just waiting to go with him and so when a company is like not rooted you know you're an rv rolling down the highway waiting to find where you want to go you can't you know run a, a store out of the rv you know and so when chad's kind of figuring out where he wants to be and, and you know, as I figure out where I, what I want to do and stuff like that, you still need to be able to let the, the business breathe and, and move like this, you know? And so 
you need somebody who's got the roots somewhere. And right now that's yeah. Grapevine, Texas. And so they've got the kendamas um, that we're, we're, we've worked on with the team in the community. And uh, their thing is they get it out, you know, that, that's what they want to focus on. And so they're sending stuff for us. And um, a downside of that is that we can't hand weigh and- Personalize, it's, it's a little bit less personalized on the, the delivery side that. of things. And so what we're doing is over the next so many months and stuff like that, we're working to create a more personalized experience uh, that also allows the flexibility uh, of that kind of free movement kind of thing. And so it, it's kind of like one of those things where uh, you're at a point where you know, like you have to take the good with the bad and we know what the bad is and we're working to make it much more good than bad <laughs> and it, not that it's bad really now but like you know it's just different and so everybody's kind of feeling a little bit of the difference but you know in a year's time i have a strong strong feeling very strong feeling that it's going to be about a thousand times better than we could have imagined uh, for everybody it's going to be fast it's going to be very accurate drops are going to be seamless you're going to you know you're going to hit That's a drop. The <laughs> you're going to hit a drop like the sulab drop and everybody's going to have their damas within a week and you're and we're all going to be going up and you know where you think back to like last november it was two weeks before we were mailing some of the some of the vibes when they dropped because it was just it was overwhelming <laughs> and so yeah uh, it's been a it's been a growing thing for us it's been like you know different little pains here and there but like um i have a, a strong feeling you know within a, a half year or something it's going to be a, a world of a difference and everybody's going to have better service and support and everything that you didn't think was possible because it, it wasn't us touching it so that's my long answer. Yeah, I guess I can, to piggyback off of all of that, um, the, I love, I love packing orders as well. And writing those notes was literally a staple of every part of my day. And so a lot of things have changed on my day to day, but our attention and our focus has shifted to what can we do to make things better. And right now, uh, our attention and focus is not on just shipping the Kanamas, but like making that experience more personalized. And also, uh, we're going to be doing a little bit more uh, content. You know, YouTube's going to ramp up real big this summer. Our goal is to to focus more on creating those, you know, videos and things, interactive things with you all, and things uh, that we can't talk about yet. But you will see the fruition of. And uh, just know that it's a temporary thing, and we are moving and growing. So it's an exciting and good change. Word. I should say, yeah. It's funny how often you you know you get on something and you talk about what you can't talk about. <laughs> it is interesting. Wait, yeah, that's the life of an optimist. I feel like you know it's like you're so excited for the future, and and even as we make pro, you know, like when we think back to like one of some of the early days, you know, you can't imagine how we'd be looking at today. You know, I would be gushing with excitement, but now you know here we are today, and we're gushing for the future. You know what I mean? So it's just, yeah. it's just part of the, how it works, you know? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I think uh, one of my favorite things in Kendama is creating videos. And it's funny because, you know, yeah, you get so deep in, into the rabbit hole, Shelton said of like thinking about like packaging and, you know, emails and, and customer service, you forget like, oh, wait, why did I start this? Why do we do this? Like, oh, I love making videos and like sharing sharing basically my experience with Kanana with others. Um, so what we are going to, we are going to be shifting focus towards that uh, a lot more. And so very exciting news to say the least. But, yeah. Shelton, you have any conversation topics, anything you'd like to talk about? Um, to do with Kanama or what? Yeah. Um, well, so lately, I don't know, uh, you probably, I don't know how you feel about going down this rabbit hole, but like uh, the more time I spend on NFTs, the more excited I get about like how it can interact with Kandama. That's the thing for me is like, this is another place where passion comes out is like, you, you see things that are happening in the world. And like the first thought I have is like, oh, how can this work with Kandama? You know? And so like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the more I look at NFTs and stuff like that, and if you don't know what that is, it's a non-fungible token. It's basically like, the way people are describing it now is like it's a digital trading card, except a lot of times now what people are starting to do is they're infusing them and building them into other things. Um, so, for example, uh, just so I can put this out there as an idea. Um, 
I, what I would like to do is like for the next bout the border, uh, we create um, so many NFTs that are like a, a 2021 or like maybe it's not a time bound kind of thing. It's like a bow at the border NFT. Um, and there's, you know, so many that are collectible. So like, you know, if you're into that kind of thing and you want to collect an element that represents like your life in Kendama and you want to keep it in your little uh, digital wallet or hardware wallet or whatever, um, it would be something that would improve your life at the event as well. So like, uh, as an example, let's say we have like, um, you know, so many common, uh, you know, it, thinking in terms of trading cards, you have so many commons, you know, in Yu-Gi-Oh, you've got your hollows or Pokemon, you've got your hollow cards, uh, you've got like more rare cards, you've got common cards. So the same typically applies in NFTs. Um, so I was thinking like, it would be fun to do like some common, rare, like uh, hollow kind of like NFTs for Battle at the Border where like, you know, you unlock different kind of incentives and stuff like that. And so like, um, you would be, a, you would be the owner of, say, like one of five, like diamond tier battle at the border tokens, and like, each owner of one of those diamond tokens, for example, might like, get to chill with the team behind the scenes kind of thing, or like, um, and we're already pretty open about these kind of things. Like, you know, after about the border, we'll go and get some food and everybody's there and stuff. But I, you know, it's, event kind of exclusive thing like a vip kind of thing um so like that's some things that i've kind of thought about um but it, it's exciting to see like what's possible like another idea which i kind of mentioned briefly with you is like if you did um a collab or maybe just like a limited edition dama that each one came with a token represented by the kendama so like say it's a 3d model of the kendama or like say it's like um, some art associated with the design or something like that that you become the owner of and like on the drop you would be the owner of that token and then you know like let's say you wanted to trade the kendama or you wanted to trade the token you've still got one other element from the collab or maybe you do trade them both it just makes it more fun for those who like to collect and trade um so those are a couple of ideas i've had and like if anybody's thought about nfts or something like that it'd be fun to just chat about it and see what you're thinking but like um I don't know. It's it's another one of those things where you're excited for the future and you're like, well, heck, what is possible? What can we do with this thing? You know, so it's yeah. kind of figuring it out. But that's what I've been thinking about lately. Yeah, I you know the NFT thing. I've probably just read read up or listened up enough to get a base understanding of it. Um, but what I can say is, I am hosting Battle at the Border, and so who knows? You know, like whatever ways we can intertwine your ideas and my ideas we can make something really cool happen i on the on the subject of events and battle at the border i do want to go ahead and just put this out there as of now shelton and i are definitely planning on hosting battle at the border in nashville in january of 2022 which is crazy to say that right um i'm so excited i know uh, recently josh kim did the revive the vibe tour and it's funny because like the name of the tour you know revive the vibe it really felt so refreshing to be playing Kendama with other people to see faces I haven't seen in a year and a half. And, uh, you know, just again, a nice refresher reminding me why we play Kendama and why community is so important because we've gone without it for so long. And so I'm just excited to get back into events because that's, Again, that's one of my favorite things about Kanama. If I, like, if, if today, like, all I had to worry about was soul Kanamas, I think uh, what I would be doing is doing, like, two events a month all over the country for, like, two years straight. Two, uh, I mean, two minimum. It might be <laughs> one a week. Sorry, two years? Is that what you said? Yeah, for, like, it legit, like, oh, we're, talking oh, yeah. about, like we're talking about, like, 50 to 100 events over the span of two years, just continuously throughout this the is another. This is another concept where it's, like, if Shelton and I were, were also in charge of shipping all day, every day, we couldn't do things like that. I'll yeah. say, yeah, we fully plan on doing a tour, and, and we've got a lot to figure out to make that happen. But, but things like that that are really exciting, you know, grabbing a couple of the team members, uh, maybe some other – players in the community that are like raring to go. Um, I know, for example, like, you know, Colin Hislop's got his camera ready to film everything, like be a really cool person to throw in the van and just go. <laughs> and uh, so things like things like that are going to be really exciting. Glad that we can continue to do those because those also have such a big impact on Kendama, the growth of Kendama. And uh, I'm very looking forward to tours. What? So, okay. Tour stops because we're we're in a vehicle in the USA. Name like 
I don't want to say top three, but like three cities that you'd like to go to and three cities that you think would be just awesome stops for a Kanama tour nationwide. A hundred percent Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I've been, that's an itch I've been wanting to scratch for a while. Uh, Austin, Texas. And I think I have to default back into New York city. So I think those three would be my top three there. Three locations I've never been to, which is like kind of shocking. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in on you, or I, I'm in on that with you to like travel. Okay, you York, can Arizona as well. I Texas. mean, you can't take mine. Yeah. Um, I've okay. got a head that I think would be good, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to throw it in afterwards when you said yours, just as a like, hey, cool. Do, don't do one that's just so like glaringly obvious either. Like if you say Orlando, I'll slap you through the phone. <laughs> okay, I was... I got one that's like glaringly obvious, but it's it's also one that you'd enjoy a lot. Let's say San Diego. Okay, San Diego is pretty solid. So, yeah, San Diego. I feel like we've got to hit San Diego because I I've been there once. I loved it so much. Um, imagine L.A. but chill. <laughs> yeah, not quite as intense. Just anymore. a little more chill. Yeah. Uh, I would also like to do a stop in Portland. Oh, Oregon. Portland's pretty good. I think so. Yeah. That's kind of like Seattle, but like, you know, I kind of want to do Portland. You know what I mean? It's like not too on the nose, the, the Washington visit. Yeah. And then let's bring it over to the East Coast. Oh, good idea. Um, I would like to do a stop in ah, Toronto. Toronto. Okay. So 100 I've been to Canada, but I only know Vancouver. True. So, and, and I'm sorry, Kareem, I know we should be in Calgary. We'll do Calgary, too. <laughs> so I, said, I already said East Coast, though, so I had to go all the way. So the name I was going to throw in there was Sacramento. For some reason, I felt like Sacramento would be a great place for an event, and I don't know why. It was, something like it was an old-school hotspot for Kanama. Yeah. So I Blew think up up there. So, so Toronto, if we feel like we could scrape together a nice gang, I think that that would be a great candidate for an international battle at the border. Oh, <laughs> literally. <laughs> That's sick. You're right. BATB Canada. Adam, slide your DMs. That's a good idea. Just putting it out there. All right. <laughs> yeah, we don't know anybody who lives in Canada. <laughs> I see three people in the chat right now. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll collab on it, guys. Okay, what? Okay. Let's just brainstorm real quick. Names for the tour. Or what, what do we call this tour? It's too bad Josh Kimzik revived the vibe because that's the solid. <laughs> I wanted to call his tour the recovery tour, but someone's like, that doesn't sound right. Like, we're not recovering. <laughs> Sounds like we all got sick or something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Is this in 21 or 22? 22. Um, 22? I don't know. I mean, hey, if we do the end of uh, – could we do the end of this year? Is that is that a possibility? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe? Maybe. Let's just, hey, late, late summer, fall. I'm having a hard time with names. Usually I'm on the names pretty fast. I'm Let's do fall. Know. Fall is beautiful. The whole country is just going to be turning orange, yellow, and red. That's what, okay. So my name is the Glow Tour, G-L-O-W Tour. It's something about that kind of mm. autumn glow, you know, it's, it's, wow. it's, a, it's a warm reopening, you know, you're looking out into the sunset or the sunrise and there's a glow about it. It's like an optimistic, like hope. It's a, we're in the future. It's the glow tour. That's great. Man, what in the What world? up that one? Come on, man. <laughs> I kind of, I'm, I feel like I'm going too cheesy thinking like East to West tour because that's not quite, it doesn't quite encompass us. It's more about, that's more about the actual stretch of the, the trip. trip. But, um, let's see. I'm going to read, read some of the comments because these are, people are dropping in the chat. What do you guys think? Tour names. That's a great question, Chad. <laughs> You have plenty of time to think about Soul it. on Wheels and just that's another just cheesy. I better stop trying to come up with ideas because those aren't great. <laughs> Next thing you know, it's gonna be a picture of like an RV and it's like Thomas for wheels. It's just the most like <laughs> Tom is on the go now. <laughs> uh yeah, may, so yeah, I'll think about that. You need I need a hundred bad ideas to come up with a good idea. So I feel I feel that. You just put it in the meat grinder and just so you get something good. 
Yeah, for the Soul Tour, that one's cool. Soul to Sunset Tour. Bro, my chat is the battle, <laughs> oh, I don't the know battle across borders. That one, that's good. The battle of the cross borders? No, battle across borders. Because oh. you're just going over every single state, going into Canada. DATB battle across the borders. The soul spread. <laughs> Bro, why, <laughs> like, my chat is frozen. I don't know why. Oh, I'm sorry. Sometimes Instagram, Instagram is doing lives. that. Killing the vibe. What is this? Oh, what the? Oh, you got a filter. That's beautiful. <laughs> Dude, I'm such a boomer right now. I'm just trying to fix the chat. And I've turned black and white. <laughs> Should we answer a couple more questions? If you guys are new in the chat, go ahead and uh, drop some more questions down there in the chat bubble. It's all you, bro. I'm frozen. Oh, really? Anything else you want to talk about, Shelton, on this beautiful Sunday evening or afternoon? Let's see. What's, um, let's see. Hmm. I'm talking about this mug. So Alex Mitchell gave this to me. Uh, it wasn't even a birthday gift or any special occasion. He just gave me this mug and it's a bunch of just really cool photos of like the vibes. It looks like all pictures you took. I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. My other mug. So I, I made two cups of coffee for myself. This oh, is I, a I got GT Tariba coffee collab mug. I got an idea. Crazy. Okay, so let me pitch yeah. you an idea. So we've got, uh, we're going to start the tour, like, say, southeast, like Orlando or whatever. And you go to the West Coast, you go across to the North Pacific Northwest, hit the Vancouver, you go back across the Midwest and in Toronto. And it's like, a, say, like a cafe, it's a coffee, it's a soul tour. And we call it the mug tour. And each place, whoever <laughs> brings the coolest mug to the event wins something. And then by the time you're done, you've just got a pile of like a bunch of mugs. <laughs> the mug tour. That That's something else, man. I, <laughs> that's something else. I don't know what to think about that. You got my mind running in a million different directions. I just, It was just a way for me to get a bunch of cool mugs, I guess. <laughs> oh, you, we get to keep the mugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we keep them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That might be separate from the Kanama tour. That might just be a, a coffee tour. <laughs> <laughs> Give all the trouble and just have people send us mugs. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll pull up some questions if, uh, let's see if any new questions have popped up, kind of stimulate some conversation. I'm going to take a moment while you do that to appreciate Adam for letting us come on and just raid the raid the stream. This has been a, such a fun pleasure. I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed everybody coming in and leaving comments. It'll be fun. I'm going to be watching to see who leaves comments later. I want to hear about the mug tour. <laughs> the mug tour. Uh, so this question, do you think KWC 2021? Uh, I think it'll be online from what I've heard. Um, if not, maybe a hybrid event where Japanese players can locally get together and do events. But I think, um, you know, for international players, it'll definitely be online. Mm. Yeah. Which, you know, I think, you know, in your own country, respective countries, because of laws and rules, regulations of traveling, uh, those localized events are just going to be localized for now. And then online for international events. Japan's going to be, I've been am, ambitious for to go to Japan for like two years. and just have as, soon, as soon as Japan is open, Shelton, you and I are going because I, I cannot wait. I need a sushi conveyor belt in my life very soon. I, a little mackerel nigiri, dude. I'm, I'm just craving it. Yeah. Uh, okay, question from Okinawa's Ash or Maple? I'm going Maple. It's durable. Fairly priced, beautiful grain. It's a lighter wood, so I, I, it can be paired with other woods. I would, be, nice I would be ash to be contrarian. I actually will say I think I prefer the ash tama anyway. I think the ash I uh, maple can ash tama because the the maple can is just it's too solid. But like an ash tama, the grain on it, the width between the grains and stuff like that, beautiful, so much beauty and it's just like you got to have it so i mean that's my pick is i i know uh Uris hates the the mixing of the woods but like maple can ash tom is the way to do it man yeah i do like that combo i think ash tom just looks so beautiful especially with a clear paint over it let's see Ooh. 
Happy. Not a question, but thanks for reposting my picture. The one in Gatlinburg with the Moo Moo. Ooh, so uh, whenever, whenever you post pictures, you know, use the hashtag no, no. Soul Kanamas or tag us. Oftentimes we'll see it. And if it's a, a picture that, you know, we like and fits in with what we're doing, I'm always more than happy to repost and share uh, because I just love seeing it. It's cool. I think other people also enjoy it seeing cool pictures and get a really cool sweatshirt on too. So Who was it? that definitely helps. Uh, Mokidama. 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 Gallimber is a beautiful place. I think it's kind of underrated. You need to make sure, uh, I'm not telling you, but for everybody yeah. else, if you're coming to visit like Gatlinburg or, or the smoke, or Smokies. Yeah, Great uh, Smoky Mountains. Avoid Pigeon Forge. <laughs> get you a nice cabin up in the woods. Take your stuff up there and, and, and stay there because it gets a little touristy, but like, don't lose the beauty of the mountains because of the touristy stuff down at the bottom. That's fun my, fact. Fun my fact. Advice. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park is one of the one of very few free national parks. You don't have to pay to enter. True. Uh, and you can hike for a really long time in it. Yeah, I think it's also one of the the longer. Um, what would you call that? Like uh, trail systems. Mm. The Appalachian. There was another, there's another question about Yosemite because I, re I recently visited Yosemite. I've been on a national parks kick because I got the pass. I want to take advantage of that pass a little bit more. And Sheldon and I actually recently went to Rocky Mountain National Park, which was absolutely gorgeous. Um, I recommend if, if you live in the States or even, you know, in your respective countries, if you have national parks, take advantage of that. Go, go check them out. Um, a, the here's outdoors a rejuvenating. So when we were in Denver and we went west to the Rockies, we hit uh, some part, I think, was so when you so, so when you land in Denver, I think the altitude is maybe like 5,400, 5,500, 5,800 feet, somewhere in there. Let's say 58 because it's it's a mile high. I yeah, yeah, true, yeah. True. So you're basically a mile above sea level. But when we went into the, the Rockies and we went up, we were hitting elevations. I think when we took the picture of the KD, which was on our page, it was like elevation like 9,800 or 700. Something like that, yeah. So, so basically what happened uh, uh, when we um, got in the plane and we took off, we were at a cruising altitude of, I think, like 7,500 feet. So we were actually lower in the air than we were where we took the picture on the mountain, which is a cool, a cool fact. That is true. Sheldon and I got to like, it was 9,900 feet. It was like just below 10K and we almost made it to 10,000 feet elevation, I think, which is the highest in elevation I've I've ever been. I can't put it any higher. I don't think. I mean, um, so that was kind of, that was kind of funny. But we were just shooting. We're like, come on, 10k, please. No, and it was got dark, and like it was time to. We were in the snow too. That was kind of a funny thing. Where, um, you know, what was it? April. It was, was like seven degrees <laughs> in Denver, <laughs> and then you go up in the Rockies, and it's like I think we got sunburnt the day before, maybe, and then just straight to snow, which was I was sunburnt cool. in snow, yeah. So favorite part of Yosemite, Yosemite Valley uh, has a lot of different, like very distinct rock uh, structures. And each one has a trail that you can climb up. And so I was only there for two days and I did two different trails. My favorite one that I saw, which I know there's mo so many more that I haven't got to do yet, was the Upper Yosemite Falls, the Upper Yosemite Falls Trail. And this hike was a 4,000 foot elevation climb. Um, and the whole time this giant waterfall is just pouring down this mountainside. And so you get rainbows from like the vapor and the light hitting it. Um, you get like this very cooling effect, but then like most of the trail is kind of exposed to the sunlight. So it's like, you get to experience a lot of different environments. And it feels like, you know, ecosystems, I guess, as you're moving up this mountain. And then, get to the, the peak of Yosemite Falls. And then I was looking across and I see these really small, I mean, small people because they were far away. Uh, and I asked someone, I was like, hey, how far do you think the hike is? And they're like, oh, it's only a 20 minute hike up there. And it was like an additional 600 foot climb. I was like, told my friend with me, I was like, let's go, let's do it. And so we did it. And then it, it was a uh, Yosemite Point. And this was like one of the highest points in the valley. And so it was just cool overlooking the whole valley, looking back at, there was probably like five 
hundred to a thousand people that stopped at the falls and didn't go to the point and like maybe 10 people up at the point. And so I think getting up to that point, um, it took something like five or six hours to get to the top from the very bottom, 4,000 feet of elevation climb. And you know, we stopped, took a lot of pictures, snack on the way up, but just the, the vastness of, you know, getting to that peak and looking down is incredible. So I would say upper Yosemite falls trail up to Yosemite point was my favorite part of Yosemite. Mm. Yeah. That's a dream visit for me as well. I will say I've heard a lot about Banff National Park in Canada. I've heard it is just absolutely beautiful. Also, Glacier National Park in Montana and uh, Zion, Yellowstone, so many that I have to check off my list. So I hope, hope I can get those eventually uh, checked off because I'm a geek. I'm a geek for national parks now. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think uh, so. Peaches, Peaches and Korean says, when are you going to come through to Canada? I, I, as soon as the two week, the two week, uh, what is that? The quarantine is over. I'm ready to come up and travel. I, I'm, come, I'm ready to come visit. That two weeks is just brutal. <laughs> Sitting in a hotel room for two weeks waiting. But uh, as soon as it's open, you know I'm coming, coming to the brew battle. Going to visit Adam and Kareem, all those Calgary homies. <laughs> Yeah. Let me see if there's any more questions. Here's one from oh, Soul Kanamas Canada. Is that Adam McNeil in disguise? Bro, he's been here <laughs> for like an hour. <laughs> uh, challenges of collaborating. Shelton, can you think of any challenges we've had? Uh, I guess historically, maybe any at all i think the challenges come with um let me see if i can be thoughtful about this answer the most easiest way to answer this is the challenges come in the design which is kind of like talking about how stretching out what you think is your boundaries to be something else um other challenges for collaborations is i think um something less obvious might be understanding the nuances of each brand so like, you know, when you go from like, like, let's say, for example, and I'll say this because I know that it's, uh, it was one that was easy to incorporate. So like, find your wings, you know, you know what the brand is, and you might picture somebody who's like, super into it, like into the brand, and you might picture someone who's super into soul. And if you put those two people next to each other, you know, would they look alike? Would they be wearing the same shoes? Would they like, speak the same way? You know, you, you start to think about someone's community or someone who believes in a brand, you know, they, they kind of share a certain level of values and stuff like that. And so uh, one challenge is there are maybe a lot of opportunities to collab, but saying yes or no to it uh, because it's so much more complicated than just the product, you know, or just the marketing or just the storytelling. It's like you have to be able to have both your communities handshake you know, or they have to be able to hang out together. They have to be able to feel like they're both represented under the collaboration. Because if one community doesn't feel like they're maybe uh, aligned with the, the one you want to collab with, they are ostracized. It's actually the opposite of a collab. You're isolating them because you're saying, hey, we share these values. And if you don't share those values, you're now conflicting with your community base. So I think that that would be a big challenge is like, you can't say yes to everybody either. So I have to be thoughtful about who you are even collabing with. That was very spot on. I agree. And a lot of other things, you know, like we collaborate with a lot of international brands and, and individuals. And so ironically, some, you know, just a little bit of uh, communicational things where maybe lost in translation or one, one club that we have upcoming, uh, we actually had a translator who was helping communicate all of the, again, the nuances of the designs and the, the rollout and the release and everything. And uh, it's exciting and it's, it's cool. It's refreshing. It gets you out of your comfort zone. And uh, that's another thing, you know, if we didn't seek collaboration and, and working with other people, you'd never come across those challenges. Facts. Facts. All right. Let me see. There's a couple more good questions. Uh, I figure we'll just cover this one really quickly because we can also kind of tie in that last question into this. 
Uh, when will the Sioux Lab Soul Collab drop? So this is this is oh one that we've had God. so many challenges oh with because it's a time it's a, a huge time thing. It's it involves a lot of uh, again those like it's an international collab, so there's a lot of translating and and things of that sort. Um, it's also a very expensive and time consuming thing, and so it's it's just taking uh, way longer than we anticipated. <laughs> Um, I don't have a date because there, you know, it's <laughs> end of May, <laughs> in November. <laughs> Alex Mitchell says I'm currently stringing them, so uh, everybody, there, Alex. <laughs> every, yeah, give Alex a pat on the back. Don't DM him asking for one because, uh, yeah, maybe three true. weeks from now. But I've been saying three weeks for months now, so I'm not, I'm not sure. But yeah, yeah well, I mean. Chad teased it again because in the picture where he's congratulating Alex Mitchell on his graduation, he's literally in and there stringing him up. <laughs> he was just working, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Long story short, it's yeah, the, all the complications behind getting this rolled out. It's it's a long, long time. So, uh, eventually, <laughs> it'll be worth it. A hundred percent. Glue the spike or not glue the spike? I, Chad Covington, uh, I've glued spike before, but I love getting flat spikes and doing border balances. I just love breaking in a kendama. And uh, one of the nice things about breaking in a kendama is it just gets better. And if you ever need to uh, refresh in your setup, you can just throw a new tama on, or sorry, throw a new pin on your beat tama and you got stalls out the gate, but you don't lose the precision of the spike. So I say no glue. My, uh, my hot take you. is if you glue your spike and then you beat the tar out of the rest of the kanama, but just the spike is preserved, it's like, it's like skipping leg day. You've got this perfectly <laughs> nice spike, but the rest of your dama is banged up. It just doesn't look right. <laughs> but yeah, it does. I mean, I think it does affect the, the reason most people, I guess, would glue a spike is spikes. You know, if I were to hit right here, it's probably going to roll off. But if it's sharp, it might hit the bevel and just slide in and increase the chances of spiking it. So, well, I can't land solar flares easily if I've got a sharp spike. <laughs> <laughs> That's facts. That's a good point. But, um, you know, I think everyone plays Konami differently. If you want to glue your spikes, that's, you know, that's up to you. Fully up to you. Hey, Adam. Hi, Adam. <laughs> Blue spike, because eventually it flattens anyways, and I blaze through Dom is so fast already. Yeah, I could see that. That would be the one, like, defense is, like, yeah, short spike. It, it does feel good. I'll be honest. It really does. I mean, a fresh spike is just a thing of beauty. But, Absolutely. Yeah. Next question. What is Soul's dream collab? Um, back in the day, it was round two, I suppose. I think uh, that's that's actually crazy to say because it's like, oh, I'd love to do this, oh, and then I've got one. It happens. Okay, so my dream collab is National Geographic. Nat Geo collab. That's cool. That's so cool. Um, let me think. Dream collab. I mean, I think any Kanama owner. Uh, in the prime of Supreme drops would have said Supreme would be the coolest collab just because, uh, you know, very simple branding, just that red bar Supreme text font on the Tama. Nice clean one. But now I think uh, Supreme's not as hype. I don't know. Um, I think it'd be really cool to do a collab like uh, Nike collab or- I'll get another one. Or like, uh, like Patagonia. Imagine one of the like fleece patterns on a kendama. I, I, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Nike Patagonia. That'd be a really cool collab. Yeah, I like that. I got another one. I've been following these guys for a long time. Um, Pantone, the the company that does all the colors. You do they have? Wait, real quick. Do they have competitors? Because I've never heard of another 
I think paint. they're kind of like a like Photoshop, like Adobe Suite. It's kind of like they're just dominant because if they do it right and like it kind of just is, you know. So mm -hmm. I think mine would be. I think Pantone collab would be sick. I think it would be like a line of Kanamas or maybe like I don't know something wild, wild. But like that one would be Nat Geo and then Pantone would be a, just a one-two punch that would be out of this world. Nike, Nike and Patagonia. By the way, I haven't made any efforts towards getting a Patagonia or a Nike collab. So who knows? <laughs> Who knows how that'll go, but. <laughs> Cafe Kendama collab. We'll do it like the original uh, Moo Moo collab. Where we did a, co well, I think it was Moo Moo who did the coffee stained Kendamas. Those were That's cool. so, I want to bring that back because that was so cool. We'll just roast a bunch of Tamas with beans. <laughs> 10 plus or 10 less than, or sorry, 10 plus or less than 10 finger string length. I, I personally, like I personally less than 10 because I love my multiple turns. And if it's over 10, it's hitting the ground every time. And I don't have as much control. Um, I'm not much of a juggler or a tapper. So I prefer more tech tricks, I think, like single bangers, um, which don't require those really long strings. Plus, I love spacewalks. So you kind of lose that control on string. Anything related to the string where the string's in full tension, you just lose a bit of control over 10. Um, but again, it's personalization, you know, whatever works best for you and your play style, go for it. Yes, yeah, Shelton's like less than 10. That's it. <laughs> My answer. All right. <laughs> this is a this is a fun one coffee hot sauce what's next there was somebody who was like uh they're taking if soul's gonna take over the kitchen like it's like sonoma williams i guess is the right brand you know or l what is it west elm this yeah like, make a cheese board make it like uh you know soon enough i'm gonna be able to buy all my groceries off of soulkanamas.com and that was <laughs> i was a comment somewhere i love that uh, let's see, coffee hot sauce. What What is next, Shelton? Um, thinking something consumable or just something more art? I always thought it would be fun to uh, do more into like storage. So like I've been dying to make a shelf for years. Uh, and I also want to do one that would be like, um, I don't know how this would look yet, but it would be something to show off just a Tama. So like a little Tama stand. I don't know what mm. I would do yet though. Uh, Mugen had a really cool one when they were selling Tama only options. And that was like 2000. 12 maybe 13 and uh it was after the first production had finished before new stoves came in and i think they found a bunch of spare old mugen tamas and so they made stands for them and it sold them in little boxes and it was the coolest little thing um it'd be cool to bring that back so you're like a modular some kind of like structure something to hold your tamas is that yeah I, i've i've spent a lot of time for years thinking about a modular like uh wall um, storage thing and it's it's kind of just been a weird like side project but I'm going to finish it eventually and it's going to be a banger right on so I'm going to answer a uh, cup like let's do one more question Sheldon and then I'm, not, I'm almost out of coffee so we might be wrapping up here in a little bit so camera lenses <laughs> It just puts a, 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 a lens flare on every single picture. Looking through for a good question. They're all good. Oh my gosh. Okay, a lot of cool ones just popped in that I wasn't seeing earlier. Let's do a couple more questions because I want to answer a couple of these. Um, So we, I talked about this in my earlier episode of Brewview, and we've also covered it on Soul Coffee House as well. But question is, is there a certain skill requirement to be flow or pro? Uh, my quick response is yes and no, <laughs> because uh, you, you also, you have to be, I guess, deep enough in Kendama to understand um, certain nuances and to be on a team and represent a company, you have to play Kendama long enough to understand Kendama. And so that's an important part, you know, in order to be sponsored. But I totally admire a player who 
isn't high skill per se, but is good at showing off Kendama, is creative, has some other creative draw to Kendama, whether that's design, whether it's an aesthetic of how they just take photos of Kendama or uh, film their tricks. So I would say skill isn't as important as time and understanding of Kendama uh, because creativity and showing, showing off Kendama and sharing Kendama is really important. My answer for that is, uh, well, we did a good coffee house episode on this and we talk for like legit, like an hour and 20 minutes about it. But like, I think the long and short of it is um, basically if people like are interested, intrigued or entertained by you, uh, you would be good to be fit on a team as long as you fit their culture. Um, so like, you know, if you're, if you've got something going for it, like, uh, Oh, who's that guy? So the other day, someone, somebody on the team sent me him. It was a guy who's like big into juggling, but he just like picked up a Kendama recently and he's got a, a big following already, but he's been really creative with like his, he can't do like crazy tricks, but he's gotten really creative, uh, in a, a short amount of time. Um, it's not Jacob Acrobat, is it? It, no, I don't think it is. It might be. It's, it's someone kind of like that. But he did the thing where he like caught uh, the Tama like uh, on the Kendama in his pants. Which that's, oh, that, that's Jacob Acrobat. He's not, actually, he, he said he's been practicing Kendama for years without knowing it. And then he got a Kendama and he could already do lighthouse flip and J-sticks and whirlwinds and taps. And he's only had a Kendama, I think, for like less than two or three months. Got this. So, but that's also the <laughs> Yes, yeah, Jacob Acrobat. So, like, for example, like, yeah. when he first, first picked it up, you know, he already had skill in juggling, but he also, he already knows how to, like, entertain and treat people, you know, like, somebody yeah. who already, somebody who knows, like, Alex Mitchell finds it entertaining, you know what I mean? It's somebody yeah. who really knows what they're doing, and they still are intrigued by it, um, and uh, so uh, let me give an example who's not in Kanama. Uh, I've been following Taylor underscore tries for a long time. And she does a lot of juggling uh, and she picks up a Kanama here and there, but it's not really about that. But she's so entertaining with her juggling and she does it just by like minor things and things that seem obvious. So like she did one shot where she's juggling and she's doing some kind of, uh, I don't know the right term for it. It's like rotation or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, where she's got the, the balls going up in this way, but she's transferring back and forth. But from a top down, like eagle eye perspective, it's it's like mesmerizing because it's just a different angle you don't see normally and that's something that someone like her like they they get they approach that and they do something like that that's entertaining and intriguing and, and it's different and and that's somebody who's going to excel on a team because they're given like little extra resources to push that to the next level so if you if you've got that about yourself you know you don't need to think i need to be alex kendama to become pro no no there are pl yeah. plenty of people in like different realms that are very, very, very highly technically skilled and talented that don't get that level of attention because that's all they've got to their name. You know, like Alex is really good, but some other things that make him entertaining is like his personality. You know, people, people come for the tricks and they stay for the personality. You know what I mean? And yeah. so, you know, if you're looking at like a team or something like that, um, that's a prime example of what you should be aspiring to be it's like don't say like i need to wake up and be more interesting but you need to say how can i share my craft in a way that people would find it more appealing or more interesting so that's my answer spot on that's great and and see i think a lot of people uh a lot of people don't know this dynamic shelton that you and i have where we really do contrast each other in the way that we think about things i'm thinking more along the lines of like skilled players and i do i do tap into a little bit of that you know seeing how creative people are with filming and, and sharing their progression and just their life around kendama but um you can look at things differently than i i can and so uh our collaborative efforts are, yeah <laughs> You 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 know you're up here swinging and they're going left and right and I just uppercut them right there. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Uh, yeah, we are brothers. Sure by the way, way, in case you were, that's a question I can answer pretty easily. We're brothers, we're not not like, twins, but uh, 16, sixteen months, months apart. apart. Yeah, we're close. We we have the same thoughts. Basically, we're connected. So my my phone's about to die. I need I just need to be able to wrap up here before I disappear. But. Cool. Well, look, I've got a little bit of coffee left in my mug. Oh, I very nice. we're clean. No more Costa Rica.
We're out of coffee, so I guess that means the show is coming to an end. Thank you so much for tuning in. Season two, episode 23 of The Brew View, The Soul Blend. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, Adam, for letting us take over. Also, let's just give a round of applause in the chat below for Adam. We wanted to give him a little bit of a break, and he so graciously allowed us to hop in and take over for one week. Adam, thank you for everything you do uh, for the Konami community. Thank you for collaborating with so many people every single week for over a year now. And I know you're going to keep, keep on strong for years to come. So thank you, Adam, for the opportunity. Thank you for everyone in the chat. You can find uh, me on Instagram at Chad Covington. Shelton? At Shelton, S-H-E-L-T-O-N-I-I-I. -I -I. On Instagram. And Soul Kandamas. For, uh, you know, if you enjoyed this chat, you never heard of us, give us a follow, check us out. And for viewers after the live, please leave some comments. We're going to pop back in and, and we will be happy to just talk and engage and chat and everything else. This is the place to do it. I love that this, this is a platform and like the comment section is where we're going to be hanging. So if you got something to say after the fact, say it because we'll be here. Absolutely. And uh, on that note, we're heading out. Love you guys. Thanks so much Peace for out. tuning in. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.